So, first things first, Floor, how are you? Good. A bit tired. Tired? But happy, happy tired. Bu busy it's been times? A long, busy times, yeah. I'm uh, multitasking on a level I've never done before. <laughs> but hopefully in a good way. <laughs> but only in a good way. That's, that's very good to hear. So, uh, we're doing this interview in English, just so uh, yeah. your international fans can enjoy as well. Indeed. Um, so where I want to start with, uh, you did the best designers, the best singers uh, yeah. program, and now you've becoming, you are becoming, or you have become uh, a celebrity <laughs> in the Netherlands. Apparently so. Is that a strange thing for you? Because you have been in one of the bigger band bands already for, for for a while and have done with After Forever and Revamp. So, yeah. what is this feeling like? I'm not sure how to place it yet. I mean, I have not been in the Netherlands very much. Mm. So the things that have been changing, I haven't really um, noticed living in Sweden. Mm. Uh, however, the, the, I can see the differences that are happening on, on, uh, on social media. And um, then I did come here and um, yeah, the, I never heard before my own name on a train station, for instance, or the people, it's funny because people aren't really sure. I guess a lot of people don't really expect to see someone that they might know from TV or something. Yeah. So it's like, hey, that's Floor. They actually know my name now. <laughs> and hey, if who? And so you get these funny situations. Like I had the other day that people did see me, but they weren't sure I could hear. They were talking and they were screaming across the station. <laughs> floor, Floor. It's like, yeah, what do you want me to do? Scream back and confirm to you that it's me? Uh, funny situations that I uh, had that way I had never had before. <laughs> but was it for you uh, important in a way to get that acknowledgement here in the Netherlands? Because obviously you, you play music in a subgenre, so, so the radio doesn't really pay attention. And now they do. Yeah. So, so was that important for you to kind of... It's important for me that the music gets this recognition. It's not mm. important for me to become famous. Sure. There has never been anything in my ego that wants <laughs> me, oh, now I'm a famous person in the Netherlands. Quite on the contrary. Okay. Um, but it, for me, it's been the music. Uh, metal is a subgenre, like you say, it's underground music in the Netherlands on a level that I think doesn't really fit with the quality and the diversity of Dutch metal. Plus, for a lot of foreign countries, not Dutch, not not the Netherlands, Dutch metal is a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Wow, all those bands that come out of the Netherlands, the Netherlands must be proud. They have no clue. And that, that bothered me, mm. and that a band such as Nightwish, and there are more bands like us, that make music that does not per se uh, match the kind of wrong standard look, uh, that the view on metal that, that lives here. It's a very, uh, it's, it's uh, um, music that, uh, it's probably heavy, it's probably, uh, it's screaming, angry men with long hair, it's maybe satanic, it's aggressive, it's, it's not for me. And all these wrong stamps have made, made sure that if you say, oh, Nightwish, it's that metal, no, that's not for me, because, and then all these, these thoughts that, that might not uh, be true, because there is a diversity that people don't know about. And so I hope that all the things that have been happening now make the people want to listen to the music. You can still say, it's not for me, fair enough, but give it a chance at least, if you can take all these prejudges away and say, okay, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, but every time I have played something of Nightwish, for example, to people that, yeah, I don't like metal, but there were a lot of things in this music that I actually do like. Wow, I didn't know it was so melodic. Oh, I didn't know you had such diversity. Oh, it's so musical. Oh, it's so different than I thought it would be. That I want to break through because right. I think uh, it's a wrong perception. Uh, and taste is still a different matter. But for me, it's very important that people know about the rich Dutch metal scene that might not just be completely inaccessible. And surely I have to say also that there are a lot of bands that make completely inaccessible, <laughs> super heavy music that is for a select group of people and they don't have that ambition either. They don't want me to become their ambassador to say, yeah, everybody needs to hear our music. Sure, I've been a metalhead long enough to know we're proud of the stuff that we make and we make it for the people that want to listen to it and not for the bigger audience. 
but I do believe that there is a diversity within the genre that people in the Netherlands just don't know about. That part I want to highlight by saying, hey, listen to our music now without judging upfront. And there's an interesting, I don't, I'm sure you're aware of this phenomenon on, online and on YouTube that people film themselves watching a video of yours. Have, have you seen yeah, that the, kind of the, the reaction? Vocal coaches, that yes, kind of stuff? those reactions. I mean, I'm sure some of them might actually be vocal coaches. I haven't <laughs> seen all of them. I do uh, know about it. A lot of people has also been forwarding stuff <laughs> to me. Um, and it's been coming back in, in several interviews now because it seems to be this this whole new f phenomenon that where people um, do this, <laughs> and then every every week of every song right. of the uh, best of song or something came by. <laughs> I haven't seen all of them, but some were very funny or very touching, or and some actually. I mean, if it would be a real like technical analysis for me as a technical. Singer, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to that. I, I enjoy these kinds of things and I put them in there. So um, if somebody actually recognizes these things, okay. that I do appreciate a lot. <laughs> no, but what I found interesting with what you mentioned, kind of opening up doors and showing that metal is, isn't just this one angry thing, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of phenomenon introduces a whole new group of people to, because you see all kinds of people, yeah. all, kind, all kinds of cultures, kind of yeah. not knowing what metal is. He's a hip hop head. And, yeah. and so cool. We can get out of our little boxes. Right, and the, 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 that's kind of what, and, and then the, the Nightwish army is underneath as well, trying to, to get things, but that kind of uh, globalism in terms of or universi universi universality in music. Mm -hmm. How, how you have, have you seen that? Because you've been traveling all over well before kind of people in Ho Holland started to notice. So. Yeah, I mean, metal has been known to be popular worldwide mm. to, also within, depending on which country you're in, uh, a select group of people still, uh, in some countries it's bigger than others. I mean, I would wish that every country is like Finland, where it's just okay to play it on the radio, and where a band is night, which can be the biggest band in the country. Um, but that's a utopia for Metalhead. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really appreciate the, uh, the, the the boundary shifting where 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 a hip hop dude can say I'm going to give this a shot mm. and appreciates what we're doing based on 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 music right. uh, and not on yeah but it's metal and the, 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 all the things that you think you know that I think that that is a very honest appreciation of music the core of what we do right. and not of all the things that have to ha hang around yeah sure and. Um, in terms of kind of uh, now getting that attention, well, let me go back a little bit first because you did the Rock Academy uh, when you started out, and I suppose you were. Um, they gave you all kinds of uh, styles to sing in. Yeah. So, so did you know early on you were a metalhead, and, did, and you mentioned the technical part of your voice. So, did you already know the differences between kind of how to? Um, yes and no. I mean, I was already in After Forever before. Um, uh, there was even a mention of uh, Rock Academy. Um, so around the time that we started to make our first album, I also started studying Rock Academy. And my focus back then was very much on metal. I, I loved everything about what I was doing and I was... Uh, completely untrained. I mean, when we recorded our first album, I had never had a singing lesson in my life. And I also got into the Rock Academy based on what I could do, but not on what I already knew or any any vocal technique at all. But I was very hungry for it, very interested. Um, and I kind of hoped that I could develop these things when I went to Rock Academy, but instead we kind of uh, went into this um, yeah, school system where they said first we're going to learn about the 50s, then about the 60s, then about the 70s, we're going to go up to the 80s, the 90s, and uh, it's important you know your musical history, diversity, and, and I uh, understand that, especially looking back, but back then it was like 50s. I want to know how to high, sing that high note on the album I'm going to do. Right. Are we going to do any of this? No, we're going to first do this and first do that. And they had to kind of a vocal technique also. We're going to do first this and then we're going to look at that. And of course it needs to become a school system that they can measure if you can do that, then you get a 
your 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 points for that, and you need to build the points to make, go to the next year. Blah blah blah. It needs to be measurable, and whether or not I can do that high note in my my own album was was not really measurable for there. I think now the system has become uh, a bit easier, but let's not forget it was the first time they ever made right. uh, a school system like this. So everything was very new. The same for vocal technique. If you think of classical singing, it's been around for hundreds of years. So the, mm. the techniques behind it has also been developed throughout those centuries where uh, pop singing, anything from eh, not classical, has, has been relatively new, it's decades. Mm -hmm. So that was clear um, that methods, vocal methods and technique, all those, those styles were not really as developed as now already 20 years mm -hmm. later, way, way more. And I also developed myself along with the, the, the things that, that came new, new vocal techniques and all those methods, uh, a name for this and a technique for that. and. and it really became much better, but it also constantly triggered my interest in that. So um, I, I learned along along the way as as well on Rock Academy as long after. Uh, I still think it's very interesting to keep developing things mm. and to broaden the horizon a little bit, because I do notice that I can sing not metal songs a whole lot better now <laughs> than I did back then, because back then I was way too young to understand what I was doing. Mm. I was not interested in any of it because I only wanted to do metal and my own stuff uh, because I was so new with that. And so, uh, so it's also a lot of experience that comes with um, being a, a good singer, sure. apart from technical <laughs> things, <Sure. laughs> I think. Yeah. But in, in terms of kind of, for instance, now doing uh, the best singers and you, you have to sing all kinds of songs. Yeah. Um, is, is, is that even a learning experience that you discover Absolutely. something about your voice or the way you approach uh, your vocals uh, going through this process? Yeah, I think so. And I think I have Nightwish to thank for that because, mm. uh, of course, when I started, especially in the beginning, I also started singing covers. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, of course. You yeah, know, sure. I was new in the band with existing mm. music that, of course, uh, was very soon very close to my heart, but was very new to sing. I had to learn to make it my own and to sing it as good as I can and make it sound like Floor and not a copy of whomever came first. So um, I learned a lot doing that and then starting to work on new music that I haven't written myself, uh, unlike uh, in, in my previous bands in both After Forever as Revamp uh, and also Northward, I've been writing my own stuff. And with no Nightwish, I sing what Tuomas writes. Uh, which is a fantastic thing to do. I mean, he's one of the best songwriters in the world, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, it's an honor for me to sing that. But it does mean that I work on a different level than I do when I write myself. Uh, and I learned a great deal from that. And I think I could use that um, when I went into songs that were even f way, that were f far away from me. Oh, am I going to sing Casa Siente from <laughs> Rolf right. Sanchez? It's, it's, reggaeton or Latin can really, unlike anything I've ever done, how am I going to do that making it sound like me? Because right. uh, it's not my song, it's not my style of music, so first I need to get the style closer to me and then I need to find out a way to tell the story. Uh, and that was a very interesting uh, learning curve. <laughs> also to work with a whole b new band. I mean, I'm used to work with one band, always the same people. Right. And now all of a sudden I'm going to work with a bunch of people I never worked with before. And in no time we're going to learn eight songs. We're going to not just play them as they are. We're going to change them into um, a genre or a style closer to my own. How much do they know about metal anyway? Are we going to double bass our way through this, these episodes or what are we going to do? Or is it how much is possible? It sure. was very, uh, very, very new. Mm. A lot of new challenges, but fantastic to see how uh, incredibly good this band is and used to doing these things. Uh, and for me to see, okay, yeah, I know what to do. When things start to feel right, I can get my, my thing in there. And then it starts to work, and that right. is super important. That's also why I think it sounds good, at least I'm, what I can say I'm proud of it, I think it sounds good. Because if I can make it sound anywhere close to what I think is good or my own, it would sound fake. Sure. Um, it's very important that it's genuine. <laughs> but the, 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 one thing that I thought as, as I watched you on the program is, is do, do you kind of have that sense, well, I can, kind of, I can sing anything if I wanted to? 
Um, well, it did broaden my horizon in that sense. I mean, I don't think I would nail a French rap song, for instance. <laughs> sure. And uh, you won't see me easily do anything from Britpop or... Mm. But uh, I surely want to try in that right. sense that I think it's interesting to, to be so diverse and, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> and, and you mentioned Tuomas, which and, and uh, I think the whole album uh, process has been uh, very active for you this last summer. Yep. Um, but for, first, just uh, just about the way he composes, because within songs he also kind of challenges the singer, in this case you, to, to yes. use your voice in different ways. And, Absolutely. Uh, so, so what is it like to to um, yeah to be able to use all those different styles or different approaches to, to your vocals within a song, even or on an album? Great. I mean, I, I it couldn't have been better for me because mm. I already tried to do that in my own bands mm. before. And especially Reven, but really tried to. Right. Okay, I, I wasn't able to growl or scream or do those things. Can I, can I learn and can I integrate that? And with a Nightwish, it's, it's very diverse and very, um, yeah, new challenges. Also now again with this this new upcoming album, uh, I do things that I, I don't think I I could do mm. when when the when the the first ideas came in. It's like. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, I need to study this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. You know, it's it's not like yeah. So so he does really challenge you. Really, really okay. challenge, yeah, yeah. It's and it, it's not just just for for that. You know, I need to challenge my band members. It's just mm. whatever comes out comes out, and then we're gonna see if we can do it or not, and how we can make it sound good. Uh, that's also where the band really comes in, and where I come in, uh, where my creativity mm. uh, comes in. And uh, it's a very enjoyable process, uh, which we first do during rehearsals, weeks and weeks we go through everything, really try to set everything, and then we uh, go um, and record it, and that's a really great way of working, and we're great friends with Forbes, most beautiful, and we did the same now. Uh, and yes, again, big, big challenge. <laughs> And I'm sure you can't tell that much about it yet, but what have you kind of noticed? Or what has the, the, the vibe, I don't like the word vibe, but what has the feeling been like kind of this summer about the new work and the new material? Oh, great, because I think everybody was very hungry for it. Uh, also because after the last album, first we took time off. Sure. Then we did um, the Decades tour, where instead of focusing on new, we went back in time, mm -hmm. which is very, very, very cool to do. But now it's time for something new and uh, so that was very nice to uh, get and to get back into the summer camp where we were years ago um it's such an enjoyable area to be in the middle of nowhere in the finnish nature it's, seclude it's, yourself yeah yeah really focus on just that it's it's uh, yeah what a luxury how special to do that <laughs> And I, I remember talking to Thomas and uh, when he was in Auri or he was mm -hmm. doing Auri and he, you mentioned that kind of revitalized this, his energy for yeah. Nightwish. So, so have you have you felt a similar way with Northward and, and being able to do well? You raised your daughter and then being able to to do those things and now kind of slowly gauge towards Nightwish again. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to have had um, time to focus on something that I wrote myself. Mm. Even though I feel very much a place in Nightwish, I'm right. challenged in all always. Um, but Northward was music that I still had. It was already written. I would not have time at the moment, um, time and peace of mind to actually really write a whole album. But it was fantastic to to use the thing that we had and finalize that. And of course, that comes with a whole pack of creative energy and mm. energy as well. But um, yeah, all steps were great. And uh, of course, the time I had to just focus on, on raising raising my daughter. I mean, she's two and a half, so it's, it's not quite done yet. But <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, especially those first two years, it's right. it's nice to uh, to and first year to have have more time at home and um, uh, I've been taking her with me on the road as well. Right. So we, we already got to to feel how it is to combine combine the worlds. Uh, she was even with me in the summer. Good. Fantastic. I mean, that's that's the best combination of worlds, really. And uh, right. yeah. Well, maybe this is it's a weird question, but what does a like an average summer day camp look like? What, what, what does that a Nightwish summer camp day look like? Um, well, I mean, the music is very intense, so you can't say we start at uh, <laughs> at nine and we'll be done at five, and uh, 
so you work a couple of hours really intense, mm -hmm. then we take some, uh, some lunch and then we take a couple of more. And then it's time to heat up the sauna and to <laughs> maybe grill some uh, veg veggie sausages. Most of us don't eat meat. So uh, super relaxed. You, you were saying that it was pretty much done um, and the, the, the mastering still has to be, or the mixing still has to be done, but the, the, the album and the songs are pretty much finished now? The, the, the recording of the band uh, is done, okay. yeah, so we're finishing up the rest and uh, so, yeah. Next. So kind of knowing what kind of songs they are and, and uh, how do you think people will, will hear what you've made? I don't know. We'll see that next year. I mean, the release is in the, in the, in the spring next year. Um, uh, I can only say that I think we've made a very cool new album. I am very, very um, happy with it. Already with the first notes I hear was like, oh yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, it's as much as Nightwish things that you might expect from us as, as uh, wow, what, what's this now? What's happening now again? So uh, I can't really say too much yeah, of it yeah, because I'm, I'm, there are a couple I'm of sure. things that, that are the same, a couple of things that are different, but uh, all I can say is I'm very happy with it and very excited about it. And I think uh, um, people that already knew Nightwish will really enjoy this. And maybe the new people now here in the Netherlands sure. will say, hey, now that we know who Florian is and okay, now she's coming with a new album. Very excited to give it a shot. Let's check this out. Yeah. Final <laughs> question then. Um, with that in mind, and uh, you're doing a couple of solo shows here yeah. in the Netherlands. Netherlands was sold out immediately. Immediately. Um, Nightwish <laughs> is, is doing Zegadom, sold out immediately. But good news, we did re announce the second show. And already, I think, from what I've heard, the sales are already quite good as it's, well. So. Uh, the numbers, uh, <laughs> yeah, are. Uh, very impressive. Right, and, yeah. and so with with that in mind, um, are you looking forward to that whole thing starting no. up again? No. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Because I can imagine that that's because it's going to be a, a lot of work, right? Sure. But uh, I mean, we're excited to already work on on the things that are going to happen with Nightwish next year and all the ideas for the shows and where and now and. Um, it was funny that my focus on that is, is that's what I do. So everything that's now been happening in the Netherlands sort of comes on top of it. Do I have time for this? To start with, a very practical, non-ego question. Because it's great when everybody says, oh, it's great and we want to see more of you. Mm. And are you going to do s solo shows? Or, uh, yeah, but uh, when? But then I thought, well, I do have a window. Um, not only to just do it, but also prepare it. And sure. It's a lot, but I th I'm very happy I said yes to it and, and beyond surprised that everything just sold out as fast as it did. But it's pretty tricky to do even more because it's simply uh, yeah, a world tour of Nightwish. It's <laughs> world's a big place, it's sure. quite intense. I do have a two and a half year old at home um, that I can bring on every trip. She needs to be a kid mm. uh, and have that life and I want to be there for that too. She's only going to be young once. Right. So I have a luxury problem in the sense that a lot of things happen at the same time, but um, well, it's an interesting the, good puzzle. Well, because the, the reason why I ask is, is obviously you can do it, but uh, we've talked in, in the past with you about kind of uh, work management and then and, and yeah. kind of not getting in that place that you were uh, those years ago. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's all good. You, you kind of figured out a way to do that now. Um, it's an ongoing process and uh, when things uh, develop at the speed as they've done in the last few weeks, you need to make faster decisions than uh, you usually would. Right. Um, so uh, it's now an interesting period to really test the theory of how good is your work management <laughs> and how much am I going to say yes to and how good am I at saying no. Um, so that's, that's an interesting one. but. Um, I'm very happy that I did say yes to the shows. Of course. Also, because the, the people that I now work with are fantastic, fast people that get to the point. It's not a hundred thousand emails back and forth mm. about the same subject, or you know, small little things that take a lot of energy. Um, uh, and I, I know better what I want than before. So it's going to be this, and it would be great if that. And, and that's a very nice feeling too. That um, I didn't really have. Uh, when I was younger, of course, you need to develop these things. Yeah, so. but it comes with yeah. age, I suppose. It comes with age, yeah. <laughs> okay. Floor, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank too. You.